so in this lecture, we're going to look at neutralization. Neutralization is the reaction of acid and bases. So we're going to look at the reactions, and we're going to talk about titration, which is a method that is used in order to identify an acid or a base, which is based on a neutralization reaction. So let's just do a quick review about neutralization reactions, and then I show you how we can um, identify our acid or base, or even the molarity of our acid and a base, uh, based on a neutralization reaction and a method of titration. So generally, acid-base neutralization reactions, that's where an acid reacts with a base, and from that reaction, salt and water is produced. Now, the acid could be a binary acid or could be an oxy acid. And remember, base is any metal hydroxide is considered um, a base um, for this lecture. Here is an example of an acid base. So hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. So hydrochloric acid is your acid, reacts with sodium hydroxide, which is a base. And from that reaction, sodium chloride and water is formed. So sodium chloride is salt and water. Now let's look at the uh, total ionic and net ionic for this reaction. So if you look at the total ionic, and then net ionic, the net ionic is basically the reaction of um, hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion, which produces um, H2O. So the ions that are in green, those are called spectator ions, meaning the concentration of spectator ions during the reaction doesn't change. However, the concentration of hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion is changed. And now this is called a neutralization reaction because if you look at the net ionic, it's basically the hydronium ion comes from the acid and hydroxide ion, they react with each other and they produce water, which is neutral. So you're basically neutralizing the acid with a base. Also, I wanna uh, draw your attention to this net ionic reaction here that for each mole of hydrogen ion or hydronium ion, you use one mole of hydroxide ion and after this reaction is done, you're gonna end up with water, which is neutral. So, in neutralization reactions, and for the purpose of identifying acid or a base, the identity of acid or a base, or the concentration of acid or a base, we're going to look at the total ionic reactions, and we're going to focus on the pH change during a neutralization reaction. So, titration, is a method um, that is used in order to either identify an unknown acid or a base, so we can find the molar mass of acid or a base, or we can find the concentration of our acid or a base based on a neutralization reaction. So titration is an experiment where the volume of one reagent, we call that reagent titrate, required to react with a measured amount of another reagent is measured. So for titration, as I said, we're going to monitor the pH change in our solutions. So what happens is that in order to uh, monitor the, the pH change, uh, we're going to use indicators. Indicators are substances that do not participate in the neutralization reaction. However, they are sensitive to the pH. So they change color at different pH, acidic, basic, or neutral. So the reason we use indicators is because, you know, when we do titration in a chemistry lab, we need um, some visual um, indication of knowing where the neutralization is completed. So obviously by just looking at our flask, by just looking at our acid or a base, we can tell if the reaction is completed or not. Why not? For example, if you look at the sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid is clear colorless. 
Sodium hydroxide is clear colorless too. Once the neutralization is completed, you expect salt and water. That solution is also clear colorless. So how can we tell if the neutralization reaction is completed, if everything is clear colorless? So that's why we use an indicator. So indicators are substances that don't participate in your reaction. They're just sensitive to pH. They change color at different pH, and by looking at the color of the indicator, we can monitor and tell you know, which part of the reaction we are. Is our acid completely neutralized or not? Do we have extra acid? Do we have extra base? Or is our solution completely neutral? Now, um, so what you see here on the slide here is a reaction of, um, it's a titration reaction. So initially, let's say your unknown is the acid, which is in the flask. So you have the unknown acid in a flask. So you have acid initially in the flask, plus your indicator, and your base is in the burette. So our goal is to add enough base to this acid to neutralize the acid completely. So this is the net ionic reaction we're looking at. We have acid in our Erlenmeyer flask, and to this acid, we're going to add base, sodium hydroxide, drop by drop, until all the acid is neutralized. Now, since we don't know what the acid is, or since we don't know what the molarity of the acid is, we don't know how much of base we need to add. So we're going to do this, you know, step by step, drop by drop of the base we're going to add to the acid until all the acid is neutralized. Now, keep in mind that the base, the identity, and molarity of the base is known. Only it's the acid that's unknown, so either the molarity or the identity of the acid. So we can't have two unknowns. So the titrate is whatever goes inside the burette. We know exactly what it is and we know what the molarity is. Whatever is in the Erlenmeyer flask, that's our unknown. So in this case, your acid is your unknown. So initially, before we add any base to this, the solution you have in your Erlenmeyer flask is completely acidic. So if I use a pH meter or a pH paper, I would expect to see an acidic pH because I only have acid. Now we've chosen an indicator that doesn't have a color in an acidic solution. So as you see, the solution of the acid is clear colorless. But as you keep adding base hydroxide to this hydrogen ion, with each drop of hydroxide solution that you add, a neutralization reaction is going to take place. Some of that hydroxide is going to neutralize some of the acid you have in your solution. So by adding each drop of hydroxide from the burette to the flask, some of the acid is going to get neutralized. Now, since the acid is getting neutralized, the solution in the Erlenmeyer flask, which is an acid, is going to get less and less acidic because the acid, the hydrogen ions, are being neutralized by the hydroxide ions that we're adding. Now, at some point, if you have or when you have added enough of hydroxide, all the hydrogen ion is going to neutralize. And all you will see in your flask, in your Erlenmeyer flask, is going to be water. That's going to be the end point. End point of any titration reaction is when the number of moles of acid equals to the number of moles of base. So at end point, number of moles of acid equals to the number of moles of base. 
And this depends on the stoichiometry of the reaction. I show you how you can figure out the number of moles of acid and a base. So that's when we stop, because as soon as we neutralize all the acid, that's the end point, and that's when we stop. So we know exactly how much base was used in order to neutralize the acid. So we can calculate and find out what the molarity of our acid is or what the identity of our acid is. Now, visually, when you do this experiment, how can we tell that our experiment is done? So the indicator that you have, even when there is water, is still not going to change color. The indicator that we have in this picture, for example, is phenolphthalein. It's sensitive to, to base. In basic solution, it turns pink. So even right at the end point, you still don't expect any color change for your indicator. But as soon as you add extra sodium hydroxide to this solution, then there is no acid to be neutralized. The only thing you see in your solution in your Erlenmeyer flask is going to be hydroxide ion. That's when the indicator is going to change color to pink, telling us that all the acid have been neutralized. We have only excess of base in our Erlenmeyer flux. So that's when you stop adding the hydroxide because that tells us that we have passed the end point of the experiment. So that's what a titration is and that's how a titration works. Now phenolphthalein is not the only indicator that can be used for acid-base reactions oftentimes that's a good indicator but depending on what pH range you're looking at and depending on what acid or base you're using or what type of titration you're doing, different types of indicators can be used. So let's look at an example here and see how we can actually do calculation. How can we find either the identity of our acid or the molarity of the unknown acid or a base in a titration? If 22.59 milliliters of 0.1096 molar hydrochloric acid is used to titrate 25.00 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, what is the molarity of the base? So the first step is to write the chemical equation. For any chemistry reaction, the first thing we want to do is writing the balanced chemical equation. So here, hydrochloric acid is reacting with sodium hydroxide. And from that reaction, sodium chloride and water are formed. Now let's see what's given to us and what we're solving for. So we know everything about our hydrochloric acid solution. We know the molarity of hydrochloric acid, and we know the volume of hydrochloric acid that is used to neutralize 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. What we're solving for is the molarity of sodium hydroxide. So remember, in order to solve a neutralization titration reaction, Remember, at end point, number of moles of acid equals to number of moles of base. So what you want to do, you want to find the number of moles of your acid. You want to find moles of hydrochloric acid. Based on the balanced reaction, you want to find moles of sodium hydroxide. Once you have moles of sodium hydroxide, you can find the molarity of sodium hydroxide. So this is going to be your plan for any titration reaction. You look at the titration, see what's given to you, what you're solving for, based on your known uh, quantity and concentration of acid or a base, you find the number of moles. Then you look at the stoichiometry of your reaction find the number of moles of your unknown, and from there you can either find the molar mass or you can find the molarity. Now, let's start here. You have 
22.59 milliliters of 0.1096 molar hydrochloric acid. So you're going to have to find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid first. Now, based on the balanced chemical equation, each mole of hydrochloric acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide. Now we have moles of sodium hydroxide. So you have the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, you have the total volume of sodium hydroxide, and you can easily find the molarity of sodium hydroxide. Here is another example. What is the molarity of a sodium hydroxide solution if 21.93 milliliters of base is required to titrate 0.243 grams of oxalic acid? So first thing, we want to write the reaction of oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide and balance it. So here to solve this, the mass of the acid is given to you. So our plan is to find the moles of acid. So from mass of your acid, which is oxalic acid, you want to find moles of your acid. Once you find the moles of acid, based on the stoichiometry of the reaction, you want to find moles of base, which is sodium hydroxide. And once you have the moles, you want to find the molarity of your base, which is sodium hydroxide. So let's start with the mass of the acid that's given. So we have 0.243 grams of oxalic acid, which is HC2O4. To convert this to number of moles, we're going to have to use the molar mass of the acid. So each mole, and this is H2. The molar mass is 90.04 grams of H2C2O4. So mass and mass cancel out. Based on the balanced reaction, each mole of oxalic acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. So from here, we can find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. which is 0 0.00540 moles sodium hydroxide. Now to find the molarity of sodium hydroxide, that's the number of moles of sodium hydroxide divided by liter of the solution, which is 21.93 times 10 to the negative 3 liters. So the molarity is 0.246 molar. What is the concentration of a nitric acid solution if 10 milliliters of the solution is neutralized by 3.6 milliliters of 0 0.20 molar sodium hydroxide? So you first want to write the reaction between nitric acid and sodium hydroxide. So nitric acid and sodium hydroxide 
it produces sodium nitrate. and water. The reaction is balanced. So let's see what's given to us. So the volume of nitric acid is given to us. You have 10 milliliters of nitric acid and you're titrating that with sodium hydroxide and you use 3.6 milliliters of 0 0.20 molar sodium hydroxide. So we want to know the molarity of the nitric acid. So since we're doing the titration, we have to find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Based on the balanced reaction, based on the stoichiometry, you want to find the moles of nitric acid. And once you find the moles of nitric acid, you can find the, mo the molarity of nitric acid. So to find the number of moles of your base, you have 3.6 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And molarity is given to you, which is 0.2 moles of sodium hydroxide. Uh, per 1,000 milliliters. So milliliters and milliliters cancel out. Based on the balanced reaction, each mole sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of nitric acid. So from here, we can find the number of moles of nitric acid. which is 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of nitric acid. Now to find the molarity of nitric acid, that's the number of moles divided by liter of the solution. So we have 10 times 10 to the negative 3 liters. Which is 0 0.072 molar. So the answer is A.